Okay, take your Bible and just be seated for a moment. We're going to still work on lesson 10. I know you received lesson 11, but we're going to work on lesson 10 because I want not only myself understanding, but for you folks to get understanding. So we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 1. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yes. Woohoo. Yeah. Now we're going to read this here because we're expecting what we say. We're expecting that whatever we say, we've already got it. We understand that, don't we? So now, I thank you. First, we praise him. I thank you. You are the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're the Father of glory. Now, Father, I ask you and I thank you because we've already got it. We've got your wisdom, your revelation. The knowledge of you is what we're asking for that the eyes of our understanding would be opened and lightened for this study tonight so that we can know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of your glory, what is our inheritance as your children, as your saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe according to the working of your mighty power which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Daddy, thank you for putting all things under Jesus' feet, for giving Jesus to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, and we are the fullness of you that filleth all in all. Now, look at Ephesians 1.3. 1, 3. 1, 3. Ephesians 1.3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and what else does it say? Who what? Yes. Hath blessed us with what? Every All, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, we do know, we do know that how many of you like to walk in the spirit as Jesus did? Every one of you have. You have. But that's where we want to be all the time in every situation so that when you pray, you know it's finished. So then you walk in the spirit, meaning you walk in the truth of God's word and what you speak is you believe it. That's what Jesus did. He walked in the spirit. We got that, clear as mud? Mm -hmm. So you want, to, I want to walk in the spirit all the time. No matter what situation it is, I want to know that what I pray is definitely the word of God and I know it's mine and that's when you get crazy and you start running around and you go hallelujah and jump up and down even though you still see symptoms and so on and so on right okay Kenny do you want to share that or should we, what, what I want to do we'll share it. probably wait until we sit down okay what I've done is I brought a video we're gonna play just a little bit of this DVD from Andrew Womack because he explains it so perfectly. And we want the word in simplicity so that we can understand it. But what happens is, did you ever read the word of God? Nobody uses the NIV, right? Don't raise your hand. No, okay. Because <laughs> we'll show you something. Well, in a little bit, Pastor Kenny is gonna show you something. but. There's words in the Bible that are italicized. That's where I go to my Hebrew and Greek interlinear and English interlinear, and then I look it up. And if it's opposite, then I'm like, uh-oh, that's, that's wrong. You understand it? I still stick with the King James as much as possible. But I like to go into other versions to get more of an understanding. But I still, like today, of course, I got my 
my uh, interlinear out looking that through, and some of you have the interlinear, but to get a better understand. Would you do me a favor? Would you play that? Keisha, would you turn off the lights? Would you play that video, please? And let's get a little bit of an understanding, because God wants you well, but there's a better way of praying. Okay? Broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing to teach on the subject of healing. God wants you well. That's the title of this series that I've got. I've got a book on this, CDs, DVDs, a study guide, a little pamphlet about it. We've got six volumes of healing testimonies right here around, I think it's 28 or 29 healing testimonies. And I've also got a USB that we put together on the subject of healing. And this has 12 of my different teachings on there. I tell you, this is just a tremendous package. This week, what I've been talking about is that faith is governed by law. It is not up to God to just heal you because He loves you. If that's all that there was, if it was just up to God, and He was the one that decided who got healed and who didn't get healed, all of us would be healed. Every person that receives Jesus would be 100% healed because by His stripes we were healed. 1 Peter 2.24, it's already done. But there are laws that govern how His power flows. And I tell you, this is a concept to me that is just so powerful. I've spent two days trying to kind of make this point, and I feel like that the average person just doesn't get this. They, they just think that you pray, you throw your prayer out there, and it's just up to God to whether it works or not. No, there are laws that govern it. The spiritual realm is just as consistent as this physical realm is. In the physical realm, you know, I've used the law of electricity. That electricity works all of the time. And if a person was to reach out and touch a live wire, and if they are grounded, it's not the electric company that just kills them or shocks them to punish them. And I'll show you and I'll teach you. Uh, I'll use you to make a lesson and things like that. No, there's just laws that govern it. It's not personal. Likewise, Jesus has already provided everything that you will ever need. And in the area of healing that we're talking about, He's already provided healing. And if a person isn't healed, it's not personal that God just said, you aren't holy enough, you haven't fasted enough, you did this wrong, I'm going to punish you. No, there's laws that govern how His power flows. And people that just throw a prayer out, and then if nothing happens, they say, well, it must not have been God's will. You are ignorant of the law. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that to be critical of you. I'm not saying that you are bad, but I'm saying that you don't understand how the kingdom of God operates. I used this yesterday out of Mark chapter 5, and I was reading the story about the woman who had the issue of blood, and she came and touched the hem of his garment, and she said, if I can only touch but his garment, I shall be whole. And when she touched him, immediately she was healed. She felt in her body that that uh, plague had stopped. And the Lord turned around and said, Who touched my clothes? That's Mark chapter 5 and verse 30. And yesterday I was making the point that most people think that this was a rhetorical question, that of course Jesus was God and He knew all things. But He was in a physical body, and in His physical body He didn't know all things. It says in... Luke chapter 2, verse 52, that Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Even though Jesus was God at His birth, He was in a physical body, and that physical body had limitations. The physical body had to grow. The, his mind had to increase in wisdom. And in His physical body, Jesus did not know everything in His physical mind. Now, His spirit man, He was God and he knew all things in his spirit. But when he turned around and said, Who touched me? I believe that he didn't know who touched him. And this is important because it shows that God doesn't just size you up when you come with a physical need, and he doesn't just size you up and say, All right, I'm going to heal you, but no, you, I won't heal. You haven't learned your lesson. You need to suffer more, or all of these excuses that religion has come up with. No, there are laws that govern. And the very fact that this woman touched Jesus' garment and the power flowed out of him and into her, 
and he didn't even know her. That shows that he didn't evaluate her. He didn't size her up. He didn't say, oh man, you are holy. You are committed. You are strong in faith. I'm going to heal you. No, the power just flowed because there are laws that govern it. Just like when you reach out and touch a live electrical wire, it's not the electric company that personally chooses to shock you. It's just laws that govern how this power flows. The power of God flows based on laws, and it's our ignorance of those laws that stops the healing power of God so often. And so, uh, what are some of these laws? Well, I'm going to be talking about a lot of this, but let me just say that one of the laws that this woman was operating in was this woman was committed. This woman was not passive. I don't know exactly the right word to describe this, but I meet so many Christians that are passive. They just kind of throw their prayer out to God, and God, if it be your will, heal me. I say this in love, but you will die praying that way. That is not a scriptural prayer. And some people think, well, Jesus prayed, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. No, that's not what he prayed. He said, Lord, I don't want to do this. He saw. I don't believe it was only the physical suffering that, that bothered Jesus. It was the fact that he was going to become sin. That's the main thing. He was holy. He was pure. And he was going to become sin for us, 2 Corinthians 5.21. He hath made him who knew no sin to be made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God. Jesus was going to become every vile thing that he hated. He was going to take that sin into his own body on the tree, 1 Peter 2.24. And because of that, he says, God, I don't want to do this. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. That is not the same as saying, oh God, do this if it be your will. See, that's the way it's been interpreted, and people pray this all of the time. Lord, if it be your will, and they don't have a clue about what God's going to do. It says in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, that, who, that you have to believe that you receive when you pray, and you shall receive. You have to believe that you receive. You have to know what God's will is. And to throw your prayer out and say, God, heal me if it be your will. You have just violated. You have voided your prayer. You didn't believe that you received because you don't know what God's will is. That's not the way you pray. That is incorrect. You've got to know what God's will is. And so Jesus, he, he would say, God, I don't want to do this. Nevertheless, not my will, but your be done. That was a prayer of submission, consecration, saying, God, I don't want this, but I'll accept your will above my will. That's totally different than the way people have twisted this. You can't just passively come to the Lord and say, Oh, God, if it's your will, heal me. And then you wait. And if, if you feel better and if everything works out, well, then praise God. It must have been God's will. No, it's not the way it works. You have to take and you have to be aggressive. You have to grab hold of the power of God. And see, that's what this woman did. Matter of fact, stop and think about this. It says that she came and touched the hem of his garment. And when he turned around, he said, Who touched me? His disciples, look at this, in Mark chapter 5, verse 31, The disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? In other words, they were saying, Everybody's touching you. We were in this crowd, and everybody was touching him. Now, for this woman to come and touch the hem of his garment, just imagine that if I was walking along and if I had a hundred people that were all around me and they were all touching me, how would you bend down and touch the hem of my jeans. You couldn't just do that gracefully. You know what this says to me? That this woman, in an attempt to get to Jesus, was probably on her hands and knees crawling through this crowd to touch the hem of his garment. She couldn't have been standing up and have touched the hem of his garment that went all the way down to the ground. I believe she was crawling through this crowd. And when you find out that she had had the issue of blood in the Jewish culture, if a person had an issue of blood, they were unclean, and any person that they touched was unclean. Anything they sat on was unclean. And because of that, they would have to give people a wide berth. They would have to shout out, unclean, because the people would be contaminated by being around her. For her to be crawling through this crowd and touching all of these people and then identified as having an issue of blood, she could have been stoned to death. 
This woman was literally putting her life on the line. This shows an aggressiveness. You know, just like over in Matthew chapter 11 where it says, The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. This is one of the laws of God is that you've got to get aggressive. You've got to get to where you aren't just sitting there and, Lord, if it be your will, would you please heal me? No, you've got to know it's God's will, and then you've got to go grab hold of it and take what is rightfully yours. That's what this woman did. You know, I want to play another one of our testimonies. This is about a lady okay, named Mercy let's, Santos. Um, turn it and I and let's rally the... Does somebody want to get the lights? Let's rally our chairs... I hope that, that you got some understanding there. So to throw prayers out, that's why we get so discouraged, folks. Because we are throwing prayers out and, well, God understands. No, no, a long time ago I told you, God, the only things he understands is his word. The only thing he understands is his word. Okay, we understand this, right? Yeah. Now, you guys want to be overcomers. You are overcomers. You want to have the victory. Now, you're going to have somebody read it out of King James first. You want that? Yes, please. Okay, Kenny wants to show you something, and I think it's very important. Again, as I was saying, when you read the Word of God, you have to make sure the italicized words in there, look that up and get an understanding. That's why I have the interlinear. Okay? The Hebrew, the Greek, the English interlinear, because that, it's, it's correct in there. Okay? So... Where do you want us to go, Pastor Kenny? All right, we're going to go to Matthew 17, and I'm going to start reading at 20. Oops. And Jesus said unto wait them. Wait for us, wait for us. I'm not slow, I'm just hanging in there. Matthew what? Matthew 17, verse 20. Okay, Matthew 17, 20. And Jesus, Amen. And Who's all there? Anybody else there? Yeah. All right. What are we reading it in the King James? Yep. All right. I'm ready. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Verse 21. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but thy prayer and fasting. Verse 22, And while they were a boy in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men. And verse 23, And they okay, shall now. kill him, and the third day he shall rise again. And they were exceedingly sorry. Who besides, does anybody have an NIV? Okay. Pastor Kenny, would you... Okay, we're going to go to the same thing. We're going to go to Matthew. Got it. And we're going to start at verse 20 also in the NIV. It says, He replied, Because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth, if ye have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Verse 21. There's no verse 21 in this Bible. <laughs> so what do you think happened to verse 21? It is a paraphrased Bible. That's why when people ask me, what, oops, what, um, what kind of a Bible should I get? Do not get... NIV. A long time ago I taught this at this church. I know I did. Mm -hmm. And so you go on to 22. There's no 21. What have you got? So then verse 22, when they came together in Galilee, he said to them, 
the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and beyond the third day he will rise to life, and the disciples were filled with grief. Okay, so now, and, and look, if you have, um, you can look at, you know, go into Google Bible Gateway and look it up. There's no verse 21, because it is paraphrased. All right, my living Bible is a paraphrase, so you've got to be cautious. The message Bible can really lead you astray, because man putting his thoughts in there, his commentary in there. So it is important, and I won't go on, but I'll show you something in Luke soon. What italicizing, how they changed the word. So it means something completely different. Because what we're doing is we're taking the word of God, and you're taking and reading that and getting that into your heart. You want to make sure you get the truth in your heart. But you want understanding of the, is that what you're looking for? Understanding. So with all you're getting, get. Understand. That's what it says out on that wall out there. With all you're getting, get understanding. In Proverbs 4, it says that. So can I get understanding if there's verses missing? And what is the verse again that's missing, Pastor Kenny? Verse 21. Tw 21. How be it this kind goeth out, but by prayer and fasting. That's important. Do you, do you think that's important? Yeah. Okay. So watch the words that are italicized, and there are italicized words in the King James as well. You've already heard Kenneth Copeland pray, and um, he'll say, well, throw that word out of there, because it's italicized. In, in the Amplified. Yes, it is too, yes. So... Again, that's why I like, to, I want to learn exactly what it's saying so that I can understand that's rightly dividing the word. Understood? Okay, Good. I, I think it, whether it's a new believer or a, a seasoned believer and you're using this Bible to study, you're not getting the understanding of those scriptures right there, what that one being left out. Because again, it's a paraphrased. You might not know that, like, could I say that you might not know about that. Yeah, that well, well, that's true. Uh, yeah, person, especially if it's a new believer, oh, he, he would be, he or she would be reading here, be reading that, and read verse 20, and all of a sudden reading verse 22. They, they didn't even, wouldn't even think, oh, there's no verse 21 here. What happened to 21? <laughs> I thought, too, it was a misprint when it happened to me with this here Bible a long time ago. Yeah. So did you go to 20 and 21? Pardon? Did you go to 20 and then 21 in the NIV? Or did you go yeah, it, no, in, in, in the King James, they go 20, 21, 22. In IV, they go from 20 to 22. supposed to be studying it, rightly dividing it, that means you, 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 that's why I'll say to you guys, take several versions and read them to get better understanding. And if you ask me about different scriptures, I'll say stay away from message with that scripture. Stay away from the living, stay away from the NIV or whatever it is. I'm not perfect. I don't know everything. But I do know that I've looked up a lot of scriptures in my interlinear, Old and New Testament. So again, when you come upon italicized words, you've got to find out why did they put that italicized word in it? And I won't share that tonight. I'll probably I'll see about sharing that on Sunday. Uh, so that, you know, you want, want to be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. You want to know these things because you don't want to get bamboozled. You know what that is. You're kicking your tail and you don't even know it. So now you know when someone comes to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, or if you're going to buy your children or somebody a Bible, you're not going to buy them an NIV. Yes. You know, it's a good idea. Oh, Here, why don't, come on, you guys.
guys, would you move up, please? <laughs> Dee Dee, please move up. Yeah. Come, come, Eric, come right up. And then Dee Dee will come up right I'm with you. Right. There, that's awesome. Thank you, I appreciate yeah, the, that. Now, now I, I can. I was going to say it's a good idea. Still grab the mic. Read it in the beginning. <laughs> It's a good idea if you read in the beginning of the Bible, whatever Bible you're reading, because they don't tell you those little idiosyncrasies about your Bible. They'll tell you that the italicized word is a word that's been placed in there as a description, but it's not, it wasn't in the original, you know? How so, many people do that? I don't know. Yeah. But there's a lot of information in that. If you go through the beginning of how they get the words and what this means and that means, Absolutely. it kind of leads into a lot of stuff. I know, and when there's commentaries, okay, and I believe the NIV is a commentary in it, I think that's the one, where it says Paul's thorn was an eye disease, a sickness. Well, we know that's not true, because you look it up, it says a visitation of Satan that was buffing him. But then you've got to look back and you've got to see what was Paul doing. He was killing Christians. He was, what, is that right? So now when they saw him, do you think they're going to trust him? No. So anyway, you, you got to look at those things. you got to look at the full story. All right? So now as we're studying a better way to pray, we're getting more of an understanding. What did you think so far of that video that you've seen? Where's the other one? Oh. Okay. What did you think of that? Go ahead. Tell me, people. Did he show you anything? Did you get anything on there? No? Are we supposed to? Go ahead. I never realized that she was crawling on her hands and knees. I thought that was interesting, because in order to bend down, that would have been hard in a crowd. Did you ever see, did you ever see any videos where they actually showed the woman? No. I, you know, I, I never seen it also until I seen a video with Andrew where he actually showed the woman crawling between the crowd. Up until that time, I'd never seen that either. And so when he, and, and he pointed out something on, on, in this video tonight when he said um, how when they were unclean, they were supposed to shout right. to the crowd, unclean, mm -hmm. unclean, and stayed away. Well, okay, she's in this crowd of people how would she be able to yell out unclean and be able to get to Jesus? He, he she would have, she have, would have never to. been able to get to him. No. So. What do you think she was doing? Hiding herself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because she was supposed to rightfully be stolen, mm -hmm. just like a leper. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we covered this a while ago in women's study. Anything else, Donna? No. Yeah. Pat Any? is. Pat yeah. has something. Yeah. Yes. I just pictured her plowing through the crowd, and then when she got to Jesus, she dropped and grabbed the hem of his garment. That's what I pictured. Whether that's true or not, that's my vision. Yeah. That's, no. okay. that's what you you had the you your belief was that that's what actually happened. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, that. Okay, sure. Yeah. And I and I yeah and I and I think the most people would have had that picture of how she got to his garment, got there and then dropped to her knees. But there was that. Not really. Not really. If if she was unclean, how would she got to him and drop to her knees when she was supposed to be shouting unclean, unclean? People she, knew her. She could, she, people, uh, sh people would have scattered from her as she was shouting unclean. That was, that was the law back then. You, an unclean person couldn't be by other people. She wasn't shouting it because no. she was keep, remember now, she had went to doctors. People knew about her. They knew that, she, how many years was 12 she? 12 years, they said. 12 years, and her family, she couldn't be with her family. Her wealth was gone, the whole nine yards. So she had to sneak. You know, if you're gonna go someplace and the people know you, even you put a cape on, they can tell how you walk, they can. But what did she do? She had to get, she, she had to um, 
become like that, that force and go through that. Now they were mobbing him. Was you ever in a mob? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like at Life Fest when you pushed oh, yeah. me up there? Right. I saw when, when you guys pushed me up there to the front, I knew how that woman with the issue of blood felt. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if something drops, you didn't stop to pick up a water bottle. Yeah. But just think, she's down there and she's, she had a plan where she was, the force of heaven was behind her. So she had to cover herself. She had to sneak in. So to get a hold of him of his garment, got it? Because they knew her. So do, do you get that? I would like to think she was walking just a far and fell and went down. No. It, she did. She had to. But just think, she's down there looking for the hem of his garment, but she's hearing his voice. And she got there. She was staying focused. She was staying focused. She went to get something, and she got it. Isn't that, isn't that just powerful? Yep, because that's what I do every day. Amen. Go after it. Look at you. You're not a... Where's your cane? In my car. That's a good really? place for it. That's a good place for it. You better you bring it in here and we'll hang it up. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. <laughs> no, I plan on burning it. <laughs> no, no. We're going to have that right up here, young lady. But remember, remember, when you read something in the Bible, you have to go back to biblical times to see how they lived, what operated, what the laws were, and so on. You've got to go back to that. That's why I like to read the history and find that out. Rick, um, Rick Renner is really good in that. Okay, it's just like if you're gonna go to trial for something, you're gonna learn everything you can, you're gonna get the best attorney, right, Dee Dee? And the dirtiest attorney, and he's gonna fight for you, right, Dee Dee? And I don't know if he's retired, but sure love that lawyer. Mm. He's a Jew. He don't mess with nobody. But when you're going into a battle and you want to win, you don't get off like, oh, I'm going to get the nicest person in the whole world. Mm. One that knows the laws and is going to go like a, like a Burt Doberman pincher and go after it and get it. And you know he's going to win. They're all afraid of this. They were all afraid of this attorney. Remember that? Why? Because he knew how to get to him. He knew how to come into court with you. And I watched him like a hawk. And he's going like this, you know, standing up. Stand up once, Dee Dee. Stand up once. Here, we walk in and he walks in with somebody else, the lawyer does. And he goes like this. Stops and looks over to the ring finger. Goes down. Goes up and stares for a while just takes his, it was like it took a minute. Mm -hmm. And that's a long time. And he also. He knows how to intimidate. Yeah, he also, the opposing lawyer, he, he gives them the high job too. <laughs> and they know it. <laughs> They're intimidated, to just him looking at him. And that's why we've got our attorney who is Jesus Christ. He's already taken the devil out. What else did you get from the beginning of this video? Anything? It's a little hard to retain. Well, let's go on and we will get it. Because when he's saying about a better way to pray, you don't just say, if it's your will, Father, or say, God, I just give this to you. No, 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 mm -hmm. no. You give people, like Lord, a situation right now. I give our president to you. And then I can pray for my president every day from that book because every day is a new battle for him because that's our ground. Okay? All right. So did you want to share anything else, Penny? No, I think though uh, this video tonight there, he gives a good explanation of it's your will. You know, um, it's real easy to skip over that 
uh, the real meaning of that. You know, we're so used to, oh, it's your will, it's God's will. But what does that actually mean? I, I thought he explained that real good. So. I, I will tell you this here. We went to my class reunion. It was over the noon hour today. And um, I was looking for the gal that I prayed for last year because she had a stent and she had cancer. And the way it sounded, but there was no prayer. Well, she didn't come this, this year. She was in Europe with her family. <laughs> Germany and several countries. The only, she wanted healing. She wasn't born again. No. She wanted healing, and she asked me to pray for her at the class reunion last year, and I said, yes, I will, and I prayed the word of God. That's it, we're done. I said, I want you to follow me over to church. I'm gonna buy you a faith of faith, and I'm gonna give that to you so that you've got devotions daily. I don't know where she's at with her Lord. I know that she's healed, and six months, it, it, within that six months, they said she's cancer free. Yeah. How can you be that bad? You tell me. And now free from it? Oh my goodness sakes. So, God is good. Gee, Keisha, when we pray for something, do we get an overflow? Amen. 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 <laughs> you want to share? Can you share any of it without saying anything? You know what I'm saying. Don't Can you, you share without saying anything? Can you share without saying anything? <laughs> That's quite a statement. <laughs> Show me how to do it. That's quite a statement. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. We can't. We set ourselves an agreement over something. Over a situation. Situation in August and even before that. It's been something that's been going on for a while. And now we are starting to see God on the move. Are we seeing a lot of symptoms coming out of it? There are symptoms, but we know the end result. Mm -hmm. It's in overflow. More than I could e ever ask or think. I know it. I know that when I agree with somebody in prayer, I know he always gives us more than enough. I know it. And you know the desire of my heart because I told you a long time ago. A long time ago. Yes. It made yes. Me mad to see things weren't getting done. Yes. And now they are. Mm -hmm. They're God getting done. You've got to get like this bulldog. you got to get that bulldog face. You've got to get mad. You've got to kick butt. Why not? And just keep plowing through. Say that again. Just keep plowing through. Just keep on plowing through it. You know what? Here, when you pray, when you pray, when we said amen, Expect it, expect it, expect it, expect it. No, it's already done, and then you keep on plowing through the symptoms. And a symptom comes and you say, get off in Jesus' name. So when Keisha was different things, no, nope, we already got it, Keisha. Keisha we'll pray, Pastor Mary, we have prayed, no, we already prayed, it is finished. Yeah, and my mind wanted to go, oh, I need to pray again. And it almost, almost like a begging. Really? Don't, wouldn't you call that that? And it's like, no, yeah, I do. I already prayed this. It's already done. Why am I trying to figure out more things to pray on just because it's not, I haven't seen the full manifestation yet. But it was done the moment we prayed. Amen. Amen. That's why when you, when two or more come together and they agree, you, like she had agreement and I had agreement. And I was strong in my faith that I knew it would come. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. But sometimes it takes time for things to come into order. And guess what? The swamp gets cleaned out. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> yes. I'll make this statement like I said on Sunday. I will not believe for anything until I see the answer. And the manifestation. Can I go that far? <coughs> what do I mean by that? I'm going to go into the Word of God, and like Matthew 21 22, and it says, This was on Sunday, I did this, and all, and all things, and all things, and all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, and if you look up that ask, it says demand, and it takes you over to the scripture when. When God says, demand of me your covenant rights. 
It's like, I demand that. Satan, get your hands off my family. Get your, got it? You understand that, don't you? Demand in prayer. Believing you shall receive. Then in Mark eleven twenty four, how are we doing on time? Therefore I say unto you, that's us, what things soever ye desire, what does desire mean? Look up words. Take your little phone and look up Google and stuff like that. Desire, wishes, yeah. wants, aspirations, you know, inclination, impulses, crave it. Yes. That's one thing. Um, you know, we can learn from each other. And sitting in um, the men's study with Mark, I, I really learned from Mark. Mark will pick. We'll be doing a study, and he'll read a certain thing, and he's already got a, a one word. Say we're reading a, a paragraph or something. He's got one word in that paragraph picked out Amen. that really amplifies that paragraph to get that real meaning of that. And that's that, uh, Mark has a gift for that. He, he does. really does. Yes. And so, um, yeah. I know he does an awesome job. Yeah. He so, really so again, we can learn from other Christians, no matter. I'm learning from you yeah. folks. Yeah. I, the thing of it is, when you pray, okay, like Dee Dee and I did for your situation, and now Keisha, you and I, when you see the victory, and they finally see that it's theirs, and they fight for it, that's what gets me excited. But the moment we say amen, we should get excited running, brother. We should get excited, because it's dry bones coming around. Jesus just used very few words. He had it. Did he get excited? You know what? He had peace and joy all over the place. You know, you didn't see him getting all uptight. He did when there was the Pharisees and the Sadducees. When old Peter, was it Peter who said to him, don't do this, then get thee behind me, Satan. When it, he got angry at the devil, Got it? Otherwise, he was happy, happy, happy. Look at it. He was not a scrawny little man. You realize that? They weren't in those days. So, um, pray. When ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them, whatever you ask. So you've got to believe it. In John 4, 48 says, then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, you will not believe. When we pray too many times, okay, I'll give you John 14, 11 again. Believe me, Jesus said. So the me is capitalized. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me, Jesus said, for the sake of the works themselves. So when I say I will not believe until I see it, I can go into the word and I can see the works. I can see the signs and the wonders. Then I've got it. So when I go into the word and I find out that I see the signs and wonders that Jesus did, but did Jesus do it? Did Jesus do it? Who did it? The Father. The Father. Because what did he do? Okay, when he multiplied the fishes, what, how did he know to do that? Because he knew what the word said, right? Yes. Did he know the Old Testament? Yes, he did. He was a rabbi. That was all memorized. He saw what the prophet did. Didn't he? But who came upon the prophet and had that happen? His father God, Elisha. Got it? So we find that in 2 Kings. So what we can do, it, remember I always say what's in the old is in the new, the new is in the old. He'll always back himself up. But it's always came from the Father first. Who created the heavens and the earth? The Father spoke. The Holy Spirit did the work. And Jesus was there. We're, we're getting educate, education, aren't we? Okay, what else were we going to say? I think that was I good. think we were going to pick up on the outline from um, uh, yeah. Lesson 10. Mm -hmm. So. Should um, we do that? 
Well, Kenny, I just got to say this again. Remember I told you that you can go on an Andrew Womack's website, and this is free. They're usually $2. You can go in there, and you, read, you don't have to be a partner, but go in and get a free one. If you don't want it for yourself, get it and get to, give it to somebody that can use it. Okay? Amen. Okay. Let's pick it up, boy. Okay. Salvation works by planting the seed of God's word in people's heart. 1 Peter 1.23, and that says, Being born again, not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And that is out of the only Bible, the King James Bible. <laughs> and if you don't... all want to carry that one, won't you? And if you, you still can use that If you don't believe it, the only Bible, ask Jerry Savelle. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that is, says we cannot get other people saved of our faith. Who wants to look up Acts 16.31? I know, we've got a lot of volunteers. Just yell it right out. Me, me, me. <laughs> All right, there, Eric. There. Eric said he's right on. Acts 16.31, so they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Amen. So that is saying that a person's entire household can be saved because salvation is for everyone, but each person must receive that salvation personally. So um, a lot of Christians believe, okay, I can pray for people in my family or in a neighborhood and they're going to be saved. According to this, I thought, no, no. <laughs> they have to personally receive it. Hear, and hear the word themselves. And that's, and that's why like, when we pass out the card, that person really ha has that choice. If they don't choose to do it, they aren't going to be saved. So they have to act on what they're reading on that card mm -hmm. to be saved. I want to give a testimony <coughs> after something Kenny did, but we'll wait. Something that I did. Oh, yeah, I, I got you tagged. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That's good. A C says we cannot claim salvation for someone else. More believers are in their prayer clauses claiming others' salvation than there are believers out planning God's word. There is, no, there is no New Testament model for today's form of intercession. Jesus never organize, organized prayer warriors and intercessors the way it's mo modeled today. Neither Jesus nor Paul sent intercessors ahead of, of them to prepare the ground or to bind a strong hope over certain areas. We claim people and force them to be born again against their wills, and we can't cast demons out of people against their wills even though most believers have evil spirits that harass and afflict them. God's word is what changes lives, yet, people, yet telling people the truth of God's word isn't properly emphasized. Ten believers out doing the work of the ministry, raising the dead, healing the sick, and speaking the truth would accomplish more good than a hundred million intercessors pleading with God to do what he's already done. Makes Paul, sense, doesn't it? Paul destroyed the demonic power behind Diana of the Ephesians by proclaiming the truth with the Holy Spirit. Power demonstrated not true intercession. Demon demonic entitled into entities over cities derive their power from the people who believe and act on their lies. Human beings are the ones who empower demons by believing their lies and cooperating with the unholy desires. It's often been said that the homosexual spirit controls San Francisco area. So intercessors need to go in and bind those demonic powers so that the people can be set free. But it wasn't the demonics, the, it wasn't demonics who brought the homosexual, it was the homosexuals who brought the demons. That makes sense, did you get that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, 
If we've fallen for this wrong type of intercession instead of sharing God's word, we need to ask for God's forgiveness and for him to lead us to people to talk to. The Holy Spirit leads, but we have to believe, go, and do. No, we learned that what we can do if somebody's not receiving Christ or your children aren't born again or they're not doing something you know they're supposed to be doing. We can bind the satanic spirit over our family so that the Holy Spirit will get to them. But now you've already given them the word. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Okay, I know, like when I was on the radio with our message, you know, I have on the back of the card, I'd go places, and like Kenny's family, several of them, oh, we heard you on the radio, and I said, did you pray? Oh, yes. See, the seed is planted. Are they working it now yet? No, but I can see things happening. See, the seed gets planted by hearing. Faith comes what? And hearing the word. And hearing the word of God. Yeah. So that's why you can bind the devil over them so that they can get the truth and the truth can set them free. But then the word's got to go out there. We know that, don't we? Well, I'm going to say it. Here we are at Erica's wedding on Saturday night. <laughs> Who introduced us to the pastor and his wife? What's that? Who introduced Tom Ward? Tom Ward. Tom <laughs> come over. Yeah, I, I knew it. it. I knew he it. Goes, I want you to meet, you know. Yeah. Well, so I'm talking to the pastor, right? And he's, we're at the point where he's asking me questions. And then somebody came in and talked to him and he just, and the guy was really lit. He was really lit. He's over there witnessing to his wife. And he knows that's his wife. And he's witnessing to her. He didn't know that she wasn't born again. He didn't know that. <laughs> and he's over there witnessing to her. And they had a good conversation. Well, it, 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 really, it really flowed really easy because she is sharing her. She come from a Catholic background, you know, and stuff. And she was sharing her Catholic upbringing and she married this Lutheran and she was sharing and I'm sharing with her you know I had changed Catholic for Pastor Jan and then was born again after that so we're sharing back and forth and 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 uh, she says to me you know you you really should write a book on your life of what you know from what you all did and how things happen and stuff and then she says to me well how would you really do that come to know the Lord at your age. I said, well, you gotta get born again. That's all you gotta do, I says her. You just gotta get born again. And then I thought, whoops. Because <laughs> I looked over. And She's a pastor's <laughs> wife, you know. All you gotta do is get born again. <laughs> so when that person interjected, and because and, back there he had questions because he heard so much about us. Okay, and then I looked over and he's over there and then this Tim's girlfriend, is talking to me, and I got to share it all again, and she was like, I know, I know, Tim just loves you, and he, you know, so on and so on, you know, the guy yeah. that I help. So it, it was so cute, here we are, everywhere we go, we, mm. you want to get him born again, or you want to get him praying in tongues? And I thought, if that pet, because I couldn't feel nothing, you know what I'm saying? You get him born again, and get him praying in, in tongues right mm -hmm. away, because that power, Guys, if you understand the power of praying in tongues, you, you're gonna you're you're just gonna want to be after it all the time. You pray in tongues a lot, don't you, Dee? Look at you just can't help but boy, you just shine, girl, because she's got the truth, and the truth will set you free wherever you go. You got it? <laughs> oh, I have a lot of fun. Okay, any questions? Anything you want to cover on here? Does this help you for a better way to pray? So you just don't throw things at the wall? That helps you? Good, good. Any questions, you gotta bring them out and then we can talk about it and get a little help here. Okay, let's go through the teacher's guide. They've got that too, don't you? Well, they're all, they all should be teachers. They're all <laughs> teachers. But just think how you can answer questions when you're someplace. You know, oh, I, I got to tell you this, when we're there today, I don't miss a trip. And I'm sitting next to one of my old classmates, and she's telling me about somebody. 
Can you turn this off for a minute? Yeah. Just pause it. Just pause it. Thank you. It's paused? Okay. Anyway, she's... Why people want to spill their guts to me all the time, I really don't know. That was always that way, though. But she starts telling me about her children and one of her grandkids of the horrible, he's on medication and um, for depression. And she's, she's just going on and on and on. And I said, oh, okay, okay. And she said, and he, he's good for a while and then all of a sudden plummet and they gotta check his medicine all the time. It's really scary. Well, what do you think he is? A manic depressant. And I said, is he a manic depressant? She looks at me like, how'd you know that? And you know what I said? I said, it's the seasons of the year, like right now, more people have depression because of shortening of the days. And she's sitting there, how'd you know that? Well, I know that. I was there. So at changes of the seasoning, because of short, she says, well, he's not getting enough light. I said, uh-huh. And see, she's concerned because he's on these heavy-duty medications. Because suicide always wants to come in. That's what pharmaceutical, you know, that's what it means. Yeah. So here, God sits her next to me, right? And she's telling me this all. But she didn't ask me to pray. But I'm going to get her. Because last year, I gave my testimony last year. And then we didn't pray at first this year. I said, wait a minute, we didn't pray. Well, okay, you pray. So I stood up and prayed and we got her done. I want him everywhere. I Jesus wasn't afraid to do it. You guys wouldn't be afraid to stand up in front of your, no, no. Just do it, right? Mm -hmm. God is good. Okay, turn it back on. I just didn't want that to go on there. Okay, so Pastor Kenny, do you want to start that on our... Salvation works by planting the seed of God's word into people's hearts. See Peter 1, 1 We cannot get other people saved on our faith. Acts 16, 31 is saying that a person's entire household can be saved because salvation is for everyone. But each person must receive salvation personally. We cannot claim salvation for someone else. More believers are in their prayer closets, claiming others' salvation, and there are believers out planting God's word. Read Acts 16, 31, and 1 Peter 1, 23. Why can't you get others saved on your faith? People must receive salvation for themselves. Salvation comes as you plant God's word in people's hearts, not by praying for them, instead of planting God's word into people's hearts. What are the many believers doing? claiming others' salvation from their prayer closets. No. Remember, I had given my parents the word. They didn't come around me for a long time, but that word was working on them for a long time. And so when Dad called and said, what are you doing, little girl? Oh, oh I'm here in the office. And I'm sending your mother home. You know? Because the word, he sent her. Otherwise, he, he was the king. He, if, if he said she couldn't do something, she wouldn't do it because she'd suffer the wrath of it. I'm sending your mother. Not at first, I'm going, oh, this is going to be scary. But she came, she wanted what I had. How long did that take? It doesn't make any difference how long it takes. The seed gets sown, and the seed is guaranteed to grow. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's why you sow the seed. There's no New Testament model for today's form of intercession. Jesus never organized prayer warriors and intercessors the way it's modeled today. Neither Jesus nor Paul sent intercessors ahead of them to prepare the ground or to bind a strong man over certain areas. We can't claim people and force them to be born again against their will. And we can't cast demons out of people against their wills. Even though most believers have evil spirits that harass them and afflict them. How do you know that today's form of intercession is not correct? 
There is no New Testament model for it. What can you not do against people's will? Force them to be born again or cast demons out of them. God's word will change his lives, yet telling people the truth of God's word isn't properly emphasized. Ten believers are out doing the work of the ministry, raising the dead, healing the sick, and speaking the truth. Would accomplish more good than a hundred million intercessors pleading for God to do what's already done. Paul destroyed the demonic powers behind Diana of, of the Ephesians by proclaiming the truth with Holy Spirit power demonstrated through intercession. What, is, what isn't properly emphasized? Telling people the truth of God's word. How did Paul destroy the demonic power behind Diana of the Ephesians? By speaking the truth of God's word with the Holy Spirit demonstrated. Demonic en entities over cities derive their power from the people who believe and act their lies. Human beings are the ones who empower demons by believing their lies and cooperating with their unholy desires. It's often been said that the homosexual spirits control the San Francisco area. So intercessors need to go in and bind those demonic powers so that the people can be set free. But it wasn't the demons who brought the homosexuals, it was the homosexuals who brought the de demons. If, we're in if, we weren't, if we're falling for the wrong type of intercession instead of sharing God's word, we need to ask for God's forgiveness and for him to lead us to people to talk to. The Holy Spirit leads, but we have to believe, go and do. Who empowers demons and how? Human beings empower them by believing their lies and cooperating with their unholy desires. The Holy Spirit will lead, but you have to what? Believe, go, and do. Now, this is, this is me. Wherever I go, I take over. I do. Go ahead, smile, you too. You know that. Wherever you go, like today, we, what was that name? Islanders should go in there. There's the bar there, and then we were at the table. I, I don't care where I go. When I go in, I take over. When you set your feet Wherever you set your feet, that, that belongs to you now. You understand that? Mm -hmm. And so people are going to come and ask you. I know an, 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 some other people came and spoke too. Um, how, did, how did the people know Jesus when he walked this earth? He heard. They didn't have cell phones. They didn't have computers, telephones, how did they, through word of mouth. Through word of mouth. That's how the advertisement was done. The Holy Spirit went before. You know, and that's very interesting because when you look at intercessors and stuff like that, now you, because Paul would have sent people ahead. Jesus would have sent people ahead. Right? Mm -hmm. But they didn't, they didn't and you can't find anywhere where they did in the Old Testament, even the New. Now we know that the Holy Spirit goes before us. That's all we have to do is follow him and listen to his still small voice and he'll tell us what to do. That's what I do. I was talking to somebody today and the Lord said, go over there and talk to them. And I said, talk to you later, I gotta go over there. I was over there for a little while, and I knew why. He wanted me to hear something so I could say something and plant the seed. Because they all know that I'm a pastor. They know he's a pastor. I want them all saved. Got it? Mm -hmm. We get to that point, church. Okay, let's go. Deb, you want to grab some questions? or Who would like to do it? Well, Eric, you're there, and you're so willing to do stuff, <laughs> we'll just help you. Do you want me to start reading on one, or yeah. just read them all, or what? It, it, just start one, and then we'll answer um, uh, the questions. Okay, number one, read Acts 16.31 and 1 Peter 1.23. Why can't you get others saved by your faith? Now we know. What do you think it is, somebody? People have to see it themselves. You have a microphone. Their faith has to accept it themselves they have to accept it themselves it's kind of this is this is gross you can't eat for another person you can't
can't tap a ball for another person. You know what I'm saying. You can't do that. You it's, have quite the examples. <laughs> it sticks, so it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mary Karen. She does it all for free. <laughs> we, can, we got it, don't worry. That doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no, number two? Yes, sir. Instead of planting God's word into people's hearts, what are many believers doing? What is it? In the closet. In the closet. Claiming other salvation from their prayer closet? If they, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, now all those scriptures fit together, don't they? Isn't that sweet? Yeah, I want you guys all to take some of those cards with that salvation on the back. And when you run into people, I gave them out today. They'll read the back of that, you know. Got it? I think instead of hiding in our closet, we should be face to face with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know what? Or if God tells you to send them something, that's why I'm going to go back on the radio soon with the salvation message. Now, just think of that. You get the word, and maybe you don't hear nothing for five, six, seven, eight, nine months, years. The seed is still there. And then, oh, I like it. Okay. Number, number three, how do you know that today's form of intercession is not correct? There's no New Testament model. There's no, no New Testament model. Go ahead. Number four, what can you do what can you not do against people's will wills? What? Force them to be born again? Right. Yeah. And you cannot cast demons. They have got to want that. You know? That's why Jesus asked people, What do you want me to pray for? He saw their need, <coughs> but they had to voice it. When you see somebody's need, you gotta voice it. When I asked that young man who was in a wheelchair at, at John's Pass in Florida last year, no, I'm okay. And I thought, you fool, you could have just had your healing. God didn't tell me to stand there. I know. I saw his parents standing back. He, he was in his 20s, and I'm thinking, you could have had it. Okay, go ahead. Number five, what isn't properly emphasized? Say it, say it into the microphone. What did she just say? Okay. Telling people the truth of God's word. Amen. Amen. Number six, how did Paul destroy the demonic, demonic powers behind Deanna of the Ephesians? We can't hear it there. By telling them about God? Speaking the truth of God's word with the Holy Spirit's power demonstrated. Go ahead. Number seven, who empowers demons and how? We do, people do. Yep. So mm -hmm. when the homosexuals, like my brother was a homosexual, there was a lot of uh, people in Texas where he was recently because they congregate there. Right? Mm -hmm. Wow. They bring the demons wherever they go. Mm -hmm. Demons have to have a human being to work through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number eight, the Holy Spirit will lead, but you have to do what? Believe, go, and do. Amen. Pretty simple, isn't it? You're getting something out. set you right next to Pastor Kenny because I got too much stuff in the picture. <laughs> now that's pretty lame, isn't it? Nobody has a testimony. Come on, did you, was, were you guys up today? <laughs> yes, get up here. Boy, I got so many testimonies. Okay, the hot seat. 
I like it. Um, so the one I have today is um, I was, we, I um, had Clark with me. Samuel was out school and we decided that we were gonna go to the library. So when I went into the library, it was most definitely God set me up to speak to this girl. And as I spoke to her, I knew her from before and um, I'm like, come over here with me. And I just kind of started talking with her for a bit. And then it was like, you know, I know you know how to pray in the spirit. Let's just pray in the spirit for a bit. How and that's what God, um, I'd rather not share that. <laughs> Two, three, um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. She was. Any age. Ten. Oh. Yes. That's wonderful. So we prayed in the spirit. Cool. And I think she, she needed that. She really needed that at that time. Because I, I, was, I was probing and just asking her some questions, and I asked her several questions, and it wasn't good, the, respond, the answers I was getting. But I knew she knew how to pray in the Spirit. I'm like, you know what? We're going to just pray in the Spirit right now. Because I don't think she knows the fullness of what she's into, but I do. <laughs> mm -hmm. So God said, you're going to pray in the Spirit. Just have her pray in the Spirit and just hang out with her. And that's what I did. She was born again. She was born again. She had to be. She was born again, but she needed prayer at that time. But had she prayed in tongues before that? Yes. She had prayed in tongues before that. Good. Yes. You got it stirred up, stir up the gift within you. Totally. Because mm -hmm. I was getting stirred up as I was talking to her. I'm like, Lord, I did not plan to come here to do this. I didn't know she was going to be there, but the stuff that was coming out, it was loaded. And I'm like, okay. We're going to pray in the spirit, mm -hmm. and God is going to use that. <laughs> yes, ma'am. In the library. In the library. <laughs> Ooh, that feels good, doesn't it? Okay, who else has a testimony? I know there's testimonies here. Just take your time. We've got until 10. <laughs> <laughs> about time. I'm going to tell you guys about Erica's wedding, because so many things from Friday night until Saturday night went totally wrong. Mm -hmm. And I kept telling myself, I'm gonna, st I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna keep my peace. I'm not gonna get upset, I'm not gonna, Pam and me, so on Friday, Pam and I had to decorate the hall, which took 15 hours. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you, I'll send a, picture around a couple of months ago, Erica showed me a picture of what her dream wedding would be. And I went outside, you guys, and I was doing yard work, and I just started to cry because I thought to myself, oh, you know, she's my only daughter, and you'd like to have that, but oh, my gosh, who's got a budget for something like that? <laughs> no, no, he didn't. But anyways, you guys, and I did, and I did when I, I, I prayed and I said to the Lord, that's what I want. I want her to have that dream, that wedding. I didn't know how God would do it, but he would do it. Well, anyways, we decorated the hall, but that night when we went to rehearsal over at the church, we got there and all the people were up in the front. Braden's sister has a me uh, mental disorder. If she stays on her medication, she's okay. But it, when she comes off, it this stuff happens. Well, she's off. And Erica didn't have her stand up in the wedding because she comes on and off of it. And she didn't want it to become a dis distraction at her wedding. And sure. everybody understood that. Well, I was decorating the pews. She demanded to be in the wedding party. She's standing in the aisle demanding to go up front and be in the wedding party. So I am on my knees, and I am sitting there. Everybody's up front, and her father and her are having a discussion. She wants to go to the front. She is in the wedding. And I did. I did that. I said, I prayed immediately, Father God, just settle her down, close her mouth, and have her leave. And she all of a sudden stopped and walked out of the church. She was gone. So they got through everything, and I seen her come walking back in again, and I just said, Lord, close her mouth. Just close her mouth. And the Lord did. She never spoke another word the whole entire time. 
Well, then, then the next day, we get to the church, and I walk into the room, and I can see my niece Arielle is holding one of the bridesmaids' dresses. The zipper broke in the dress. So then I was telling the girls tonight in the prayer room, it was, I, I stayed calm, but I needed to find my purse because I had needle and thread in it. And her mom came down, and they sewed her back in the dress, and, and, and that was okay. You know, but I'm just saying, all the time, God just continued. And, and the pastor did. He did a wonderful job, didn't he? Yes. He did a wonderful job. And I had prayed for that service, that it would be that type of service, that we weren't going to, you know, just hear some blase kind of thing. It's he very personal. He did. And, well, he knew Eric and Braden. But, um, I mean, it, it just, what, and then that morning before I got there, my sister Pam called, and the lady who made Erica's cake was on the way to the church, got into a car accident, and Erica's wedding cake was destroyed. And Erica says to me, or Pam says to me, I said, it's okay, it's okay. Because we had sheet, she had sheet cakes, but she had made a cake that was supposed to sit on a center table in the room. That cake got destroyed. And I just said to Pam, they'll have wedding cake. It's fine. It's just fine. But I mean, all along the way that day, God just continued to bring us through it. Just continually. And, it, and when my daughter walked into and, and on Friday night, it was Dawn and Pam and one of Dawn's employees, Al. We stood outside of that room, and I looked into that room, and I just thought, that is totally God. This is totally God that did this room. I don't know how this room come like this, but it is here. And when my daughter walked in, her, her husband said, she pulled him back because she had to gather herself. Cause she, and she said to me, it was my dream wedding, Mom. It was my dream wedding. Yes. It was gorgeous. Yeah. It was, you saw the cake in the middle. Yeah. That was the cake. Yeah. I thought the cake got destroyed. She went. She used to work at Manderfields. She called there. They mixed a bunch of cakes up, started baking layers. That wasn't the cake she had made originally, but that cake was beautiful, and nobody knew any different. Everybody just thought it was a beautiful cake. Mm -hmm. well, God is good. At um, Kim, was it Kim's wedding? The uh, lady, yes. Yeah, the lady, a friend of ours, baked the cake, and when she was bringing it in, she tripped. <laughs> yeah, the cake was so they patched it back together and <laughs> set it out there. No, what do you know? <laughs> she did, and then she ran and got some flowers and stuck them in where you could stick them in. It works. You remember those things, you know, it's fun. Who else has a testimony? I'll just wait for one more. And okay. he tells me to move on. Okay, it's not really a testimony. It's just kind of a, maybe. It's a reminder to slow down, take a breath kind of thing, and don't panic. <laughs> this Tomorrow I'll be finishing my third week of school. I think it's my third. Um, so I was having computer issues with my online class for writing, which really kind of stinks. <laughs> but. Um, I couldn't get my assignments done, couldn't get them to work, and I'm starting to panic and freak out. And I became a week and a half late, because there's so many to do. So I'm emailing my instructor, I can't get them to work, I can't get them to work, and I'm oh, just breathe, be relaxed, you know, I'm like, oh my God. And I'm like, okay, so here I'm starting to fall behind in my chemistry and my forensics, and my property evidence class, and I go, oh, just breathe, and then I'm just praying, God, please help me relax and keep calm and find my peace, and well, here I'm plugging away, I'm plugging away, and here I am, done with this time, I'm done with this time, I'm like, how in the world did I get ahead? <laughs> so, but I'm acing my chemistry, I'm, but I, I'm acing forensics, but I did miss the quiz in forensics, but I'm acing everything. Well, I was afraid I was going to flop everything, though, too. Mm -hmm. 
The devil better not come near your house or you. <laughs> you're going to kick his butt. No, I've already told him to leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's why that tiki on and just telling him to get out here. And, you know, the scripture in Isaiah, it, it says, No weapon formed against me can prosper. Any tongue that rise against me in judgment, I'll show to be in the wrong. What does that judgment mean? Judgment means that the devil says it isn't going to work. He's trying to judge. He's trying to judge you. He's trying to judge you to see if he can get you to speak his way. And you just go, you shouldn't. Don't even go there. In Jesus' name. And just give him the word. Well, I've told him to leave me alone because he's already taken my first dream away from me. He's not taking it away from me a second time. No way. You're a winner, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I love that. God is so good. We don't cave in. We don't quit. We keep on going because we won. We've won. We have already won. If you've already won, why should you give up? Why do you quit? Wait a minute. Okay. God said, what, what is that song? If you're going through hell, you keep, keep on, on going. going. Don't slow don't down. down. If you're scared, you don't show it. it. You might get up before the, the devil up. even knows <laughs> you're there. So when, when you do those, you know, you just think, are you going to go through things? But he promises to be with you because, okay, he'll never leave us or forsake us, right? Right. He's with us. So now he's with you. And he says, well, just ask, dude, just ask. Help me. And Jesus, oh, okay. She finally asked. That's all we have to do. So simple. Just holding our peace and walk right through it. Let's do communion. And our offering, our tithe, okay? Yes. So don't forget, please, if you didn't order a book, get it from, because he really wants people to Thank you, Lord. You got one? Expired? Well, just put a request in this year. Just put a request in whatever you have to lose. Open it up. Nothing. A book. No, you won't lose your win. You will win. What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose a book? Thank you, Jesus. No, no. You didn't even lose it. It was never yours to lose. Don't get to know, know Dee Dee. She's a piece of work. <laughs> She's she's still my favorite niece. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. oh, my too. Father God, we thank you for our covenant. Do you see now more and more the wonderful covenant you have? Do you see it? Yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for our covenant. In Jesus' name, break your bread. Remember, I remember. Oh, I usually have that too. They have to open mine on top for me sometimes. I don't think it has a cup. Oh, thank yeah. you, Jesus. God is good. So every time that you take communion, like we took communion at home this morning, you just think, oh, there's so much more in that word. I'm going to even get more than yesterday. I have a covenant. Oh, my dad spoke this all into existence and I'm just like him. Right? Yeah. Remember? Remember? What do you think about yourself? What do, what does God say about you? Right? Remember those things. Now now we stand together in agreement. The blood of Jesus has purified us. The blood of Jesus has given us everything we have need of. It is finished. It protects us. Let's drink. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father God, for this wonderful study that you oh, open our hearts and our minds to. You're such a good God. You're such a faithful God. I just love you. You're so good. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to go home, and even when you're sleeping, your dreams are going to be, and he's going to continue to unloose things 
in your mind, in your spirit, from your spirit into your mind. And you're going to be reading the word and you're going to go, aha, I got it. He said it. I believe it. It's done. In Jesus' name. Girls, we'll see you tomorrow morning. We're going to stay nice and calm tomorrow morning. <laughs>